Welcome back, everybody. It is time for the previously threatened week of tires. There's going to be a lot of tires this week. And the first up, the only Duratrax tire I haven't tested to date, the Duratrax Scaler. I do love a Duratrax tire. Why, you might ask? Well, every Duratrax tire I've tried has worked pretty well. You know what they're not good at? The, the tear strip. Uh, and of all the tires out there on the market, I'm looking directly at you, Proline. Uh, uh, these tires are actually affordable. A typical pair of Duratrex tires, depending on your location, obviously. I mean, do they intend us to reuse this? Uh, they just ripped right down the middle of the package. $21, $22, depending on what they are, except for... Ex uh, is it showdowns? There's one of them. One of their tires is like $27 a pair. I, I don't know. Uh, J Concepts, much the same way, where they have kind of a fixed point. Seems to be about $24 a pair. But today, it is Duratrax scalers. Off camera here, I'm going to have to heat these foams. Uh, you, can go, you can dig through the videos. Uh, at one point, you just hit a hairdryer would work. I use a heat gun on really low, and you heat these, and they just turn back into nice cooperative foams again, like this. Like this came with a pair uh, with a set of deep woods, and uh, believe it or else, that is the same foam. It's just this one's been mashed in a Ziploc bag for no one knows how long. So I will get these apart. I will get them vented. I vent all tires. Unless you're driving in a river, I don't see the point of running a crawler tire not vented. They need to be vented to work. Dirt track's always kind of kind of sparkly. Yeah, that clock. So we're going to take these scalers. We're going to vent them. I'm going to toast. I'm going to lightly toast the foams so that they are more cooperative. They will be installed... <clears throat> If not now, if not forever, on these SSDs. We'll see. We'll see. They're definitely... These are Yella's old wheels. Yella got new wheels and tires, which are much like his old wheels and tires. And the test platform for this will be the guy that has never had his own set of tires. The ground Oh, that's a good noise. The Ground Fox Origin. So what we will do is we will do what we always do. We will mount these up. I will get them together. I might even weigh them to see how they compare. And then he is going to run a little bit of a test footage because I consider the cut siped Canyon Trail to be the, the baseline tire. As I've mentioned in previous videos, the, the Canyon Trail with some work to it. You can see here uh, every other lug in the center cut out. The sides are snipped there through the lug. Get more side bite. Uh, do not use the Traxxas foams. These have the Amazon dual stage, but they work with most anything. You can put J Concepts mediums in them. You can put Dirt Tracks mediums in them. You can put Amazon dual stages, hair buns, whatever. Canyon trails don't seem to care, except that the foams that come in a Canyon trail is a decidedly bashery compound. I mean, I know you can't detect how hard my fingers are squeezing, but. This is a much firmer foam. The Traxxas foam is indeed a basher foam because I don't, it doesn't seem to matter what your rig weighs, those foams are too firm. So I'm going to get these mounted up. Uh, it usually takes a couple minutes. I will throw in some comments upon the, uh, the relative perceived difficulty of mounting them. We'll try to adhere to my sort of, I, I do sort of a letter rating in these things. And uh, Dirt Trax tires tend to mount rather easily. I've never really had an issue with any of them being difficult to mount. And I do, uh, I can mentally compare them to all of the, well, all of the other Duratrax, because if memory is serving me and not eluding me right now, they only make three. Do they make three class two tires? They make showdowns, they make deep woods, and they make scalers. If there's another one, uh, it has escaped my memory, but I think that's it. They make a couple in class one, like Pivot, and something else, but they don't make class two versions of those. So, Dirt Tracks is a very limited number of tires out there. Uh, as you may or may not know, I love Deep Woods. They are perhaps, based on the number of them I've bought, uh, that I've bought 
I guess they're my favorite tire. There are now three rigs here running deep woods. The showdowns, traction wise, they're great. You can see these have seen a lot of surface, but uh, mounted up, they they look like a mud bogging tire, and I don't know. I guess it just it some of it is too unscale for me. So these. Uh, hence the name, the Scaler. These definitely look the most like, like sort of a truck tire. We will see how this tightly spaced of a lug works. They do have quite a bit of tread on the side, but we'll see how effective that is. And as I said, I try not to do a direct comparison. Like I'm not comparing these to a modded out Canyon Trail. The Canyon Trail is just the established baseline because I still contend and will always contend that the 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 unassailable value leader is the Canyon Trail because like this set of Canyon Trails was $19 for the set, uh, $20 for a set of foams, and you're looking at about $30 for a set of wheels. So $70 all in versus, I mean, we're getting pretty close, 42 and we're hoping that the included foams work. You can get pretty darn close with a Duratrax, but you're still paying double the amount for the tires. And is it worth it to pay double the amount for the tires? It is in the case of Deep Woods. Let us see if the scalers can match up. So I'm going to vent these. I'm gonna toast these foams. I'm gonna put them on the, on the rims. And then we're gonna go outside where it's hot because sometimes it's not, but it's mostly hot. And then we are going to test these things out and on a rig that has a tremendous amount of forward drive, even on a pretty firm baseline tire. So I'm going to do some stuff and then I'll be back to where you are. And like, if I went like this, next thing you know, they'd be done. And as I said, we do this and we've flashed forward in time. No issues mounting these up. Though I will mention the potential for an issue in the future. Uh, a lot of people seem to poo-poo the SSD clone uh, Steelys. I don't know why. Uh, I've heard a lot of mention, I can't get the tires mounted on them, this, that. I I had no bead slips at all. You use they, they give you the little bit longer screw. You start three of them, you get them set, they go in. But where the issue might come in is that's the foam. This is a Duratrex medium, just like what's in the wheel. And as you can see, I mean, they're, they're uh, just a little bit bigger. So I don't do any of the trimming initially, like trimming off the shoulder or trimming off of here in an effort to get anything to mount up better or more easily. I want to establish a benchmark for everything. So you have a foam that is the full, it's actually a little over four and three quarter, AKA 120 millimeters. These guys measure right about 115. So they are indeed roughly the same exact size as a Canyon Trail, which is listed as 4.6 inches, 115. So I think most manufacturers seem to claim around the 120 millimeter. These are indeed 115 millimeter. The foams feel fine they feel exactly like a duratrex medium duratrex tires have a little tendency to it's very much the same attitude that a canyon trail how much sidewall pokes out uh in terms of mountability uh, i give them an a which is the same thing i gave the deep woods when i evaluated those these mounted up pretty much exactly the same i have deep woods mounted on a variety of different wheels and the, they mounted on these, which are admittedly some of the more difficult wheel. If you have a, if you do have a misbehaving tire, these wheels are a little more difficult to mount than some others. They do not appear to be directional in any way. I mount all of my Duratrax tires inside out. I put the name facing on the inside. I just like a nice black wall because when these get all scarred up, I just, I don't think it looks good. So, I mean, that's obviously the inside. I punched the air holes there. So these do not appear to be directional in any way. We've got this lug and we've got that lug. If I turn that around, is that any different? No. No, they are, they are unidirectional, which 
uh, I personally think is it's great. Is it? Maybe it is. I got to look at these more closely. They are. They are softly directional. So a left and a right, and a right would come in each package. And the only part I can determine being directional is if you look here, the little thing that looks kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a Patriots logo. Those are going point that way, and those are going point that way. So when they would go on, what, what do we guess? I, I don't, I don't know. They look the, okay. There, those are pointed the same way. So that has, the outer lug is opposite. I guess they're not. Isn't it fun to watch the thought process of an idiot? Yeah. If those are aiming the same direction, now they're aiming the opposite direction, the lugs are all the same. And, I, you know, I don't prepare. So we had to go through that together. So I can alter by mounting the direction that these outer pieces face, but no matter what you do, let me see, that is, that aims that way, that it, so they're like aiming towards each other. Those are the same way, they're mounting towards each other. If I flip it around, they're still the same way. So bizarrely, you can mount them to alter the direction of this. I'm guessing blunt edge forward? We'll start with blunt edge forward, if I can remember to mount them in that particular orientation. But as mentioned, the first run we will pick, because I'm assuming, yeah, it's hot. Uh, we are going to pick something probably on the new obstacle section that will be repeatable. Because the goal is obviously to try to do the exact same thing with each tire. I should be able to tell pretty quickly, as I say, this is the baseline. You've got to do better than this. If you don't do better than this, then you're not better than that, and you might as well save the $25 plus dollars and just put Canyon Trails on it. What the hell was that? Anyway, uh, let's get this hooked up. I'll figure out which radio belongs to him, and we'll uh, take some tires out into the heat. All right, out into the heat, we have selected what shade there is it's 100 degrees you know because it's 100 degrees so for this horseshoe little little outsy backsy upsy downsy uh, anyone that remembers back to the raid this particular section right here going through if you can see the arrows they're pointing up this particular section is one that is not phenomenally easy this is a rig with a lot of forward drive so we'll see if we can and notch it in. I need to get that rear tire to move over a little bit more. Try to kind of catch some side lugs. A little more. You might not have approached it quite right. Looks like we're just stalled out. Okay. Not worried about hitting markers. The, the markers are here just to give a general layout for where I want to stay. Yeah, I'm not, okay, there it is, there it is, there it is. But we've really punched it in. It's gonna need a lot of forward drive to pull that nose end up and it's not going to. I can get around this edge, maybe. Okay, kill, a oh, little killer there. Killing markers. This is, this is not playing into the strength of the canyon trail. You can see a lot of push there because that the rocks are pretty slick up top. I'm going to throw quite a large reverse here. Would easily have gone in between the markers there. So now we'll reset those tennis balls and I'm going to swap tires and we'll see what it looks like. Same line on the scalers or as close as we can approximate. The wheels that the scalers are mounted to have a slightly, slightly more negative offset. So we are a tiny bit wider. I'm already, see, it, it's really, there it is. 
There's, there's already, I'm, I'm stuck in the exact same spot because, I mean, we haven't changed the attitude. Let's see if we we'll try to push it this way. There's, there's more forward drive already. Let's see if I can, let's see if we can really duplicate it and just hit, hit both. There we go. But as you can see there, we're stuck. I don't know how I'm, I, I don't know how I'm stuck in there so well this time. Okay, there we go. Cut back this way. Yeah, there's definitely more. I mean, you can you can see that the rig itself, the element axles have a lot of steer angle, and it really looks like these tires can use it better. That's a good cut there. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And on to the second line. Second line, Tribone Valley. I think nicely framed. We've got the sign there. Just trying to stay on the center of this ridge. This is a little more in the, the wheelhouse of the Canyon Trail than the previous one. It's a little more chopped to the rock here. In between the wheelbase. A little double bump there. That's about the extent of the rubbing on, on this tire, I think I think at this attitude we'll get a little more from the scalers just because of the offset of the wheels. Now right there, see when you find something where you get stuck, there it is. So much forward drive in the ground fox. That no problem there. Almost through the second markers. Oh, I see it. I see it. Got an axle pretty well hung up. That's going to be a, a clearance issue and not anything else. Now we're back down stuck again. There it is. It's a good amount. But it'll still pull through. Eject that marker. Now that that one's gone, we can... Yeah, just that, the, the nature of that... Oh, I hit... See, too busy talking and not busy wheeling. I, I had that. I had that line. Now I feel like I, I need to get it. On, I felt like I needed to get it on the Canyon Trails. I think they did. I think they did pretty well. Uh, honestly, that was more of an issue of uh, from where I'm seated. I can't see that. So I can't see what's going on on the driver's side. I'm just driving on this line here. Uh, if I reposition myself, like if I was where the sign was, I could have seen that a lot better. But I think the Canyon Trails did pretty well, and now we'll see if the Scalers can do it any better. Second verse, Scalers up. Pretty good looking tire. I like, I like things that look more like an LT radial. My, my like I say, my primary problem with the Showdowns. These are definitely a more modest look than say the Deep Woods. Deep Woods are kind of moving more towards a tractory. Look at that. There's some droop. Yeah, this is also, I don't know if it's specific to the body or the rig, but less negative offset is, is the key. That, that rear wheel should be inside another 10 millimeters. It's too wide out. And you can see right there in the super low speed because it can do it on these. Look at that guy go. Now this is the point where the side I can't see gets hung. So let's see if he can slow poke it through there. You can see a little shuffle to the left. Yeah, see, it's just pivoting. And curious, uh, curiously fitting there that we've, we've really tortugaed ourselves here. Uh, the next test will be side hill limit, and we will see how much those little uh, little side legs help with that. I kind of have an idea in my head of what the Canyon Trails are going to manage. And uh, we'll see if these can do any better. Look at that wobbling about. Onto the preferred testing side hill. If you're not familiar with this obstacle, there's a, there's the, the, the sunlight is perfectly showing that little rib right there. The goal is to stay to get down as close to that as possible. But if you get down too far, you just fall off. So the, the closer to the bottom, the better. 
but you will see coming up here, this is it. It's already started to slide. And now the rear is gonna get punted out by that rock right there. It's gonna force it low like that. And see, here's the problem. A tire, this, this is almost removing the rig from the equation because any steering input this way, if I put that to full lock, it'll just roll right off. Like this is side hill at the extreme. So we're seeing how well a tire can avoid folding over. And because the Canyon trails have the Tim Tim dual stage foams in them, the dual stage foams do remarkably well as I can sit here and talk. Well, that thing is at such an angle that the driver's side front tire is probably three inches off the ground. And there's almost no weight on the driver's side rear. Generally right around here, we'll see if it can manage to push nose. This is where I would use dig, but Ground Fox doesn't expressly need it. We'll see if we can get over though. And it, it often ends in a slow roll because when you get to that point, the rear end is trying to make a transition that the front end barely made, so it falls down. We will give it another shot. And we'll make an effort to come in a little higher more from the back side here. Try to stay up higher right there. Now you'll see the front tire is going to get forward about another three inches and then it's going to cut loose. I used my predictability function there. There we are dropping, dropping. Where the axle is essentially on that rib now and when the axle is stuck, kind of got to move in a burst there. We can try to replicate that as close as possible with the scaler and then we just slide off. And because it's such a small drop, it's really difficult to come back on the wheels. So we're gonna try the exact same function. And in a perfect scenario, we make it across, we get out onto the marble and we're clear. But in most cases, it ends up like that. So I will be able to give my input on whether or not I feel that the scalers put it on its side better. The neighbor is uh, painting a container and whoo -hoo, it's like being inside a spray paint can. Uh, I will try to replicate the lines, but as you can see right there, right there, there's a lot of drive. There's a lot of drive in these tires and the Ground Fox is a rig with a lot of drive. The rear tire barely fits up under the fender there. Like that attitude adjustment right there, I can't do on the Canyon Trail. Like I'm picking a line right here. We're gonna get a little slide in the front. How much? We're still above. And you can see the attitude, the difference in attitude. That was just a proper slide. Let's see if I can straighten it out. Now, I mean, we're in, this is an intractable position here, but you know what? That's a, that's a fall. It's gonna fall right there. The front wheel is in a little cup. Like if I give that any force, the tire is gonna fight against itself and it's gonna come off. So what we're gonna do is that. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try to come out in the laziest way so I don't have to get up. And let's line back up and try for that same higher line. I mean the four, there, there's no, there's no contest in pure forward drive. But now what is gonna happen, because I'm gonna come in and add it higher, this is effectively looking more at both the sidewall lug, does that weird, does the Patriots sidewall lug work in that configuration? And how does a just a straight up out of the package Duratrax medium single stage foam compare up against a, what is inarguably a knockoff Proline dual stage foam? So I think the, the canyon trails are being helped a lot by those foams and that had so much grip i wanted to get lower into that and couldn't it it stayed up too high i don't generally put uh gates or markers on here because the goal is don't fall off but he pulled across that so high Get the get this links clear. All right, if it'll push over here, see that drop. That drop in was perfect. Now what does it do exiting out? 
the lowest speed rollover potentially imaginable. And as I have put out before, it's my own theory and I've tried to prove it to the best of my ability. But I believe that the lower the speed a rig rolls, the better. Because that means that your traction profile goes deep. And look at this, just straight, no steering input, very high. But the way this thing tends to behave is, okay, that rear tire is in a hole. This is a moment where I would engage dig, but I don't have that, so set that down and we'll see if he can go again no steering input and just look at it go level now most of that is yes the ground fox but the ability to to, to do it i think i give to the scalers they're doing they're doing really well and as we've seen from a couple examples they roll out better so i have one more to try and then we'll get some final thoughts on it I'm trying not to be too giddy about the scalers at this point, but one more thing to really, I, I remembered an obstacle that is pure tire. I lied. Uh, before we move on to the tires only obstacle, it occurred, let's put the tires on with the quote unquote directional. As I mentioned, I've never seen a tire that has directional sidewalls. So now they are point forward and we'll see if that makes any difference at all and there's quite a bit of chalking as there was no surface prep done here uh beyond i did get the leaf blower and blow off all the palo verde sticks but the 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 sweet spot for traction this is a pro tip the sweet spot for traction on mortar mix is water it down and let the runoff go off and then just to where it gets dry, just to where it dries off. It can actually be a little darker in sections, a little mottled out. That's maximum traction on mortar mix. So this guy is just going out on it rough. We'll see right here. Okay, yeah, it's point forward. I can, I can tell you from that five seconds. Uh, should you decide to buy Duratrack scalers, we're gonna do a zoom here just for a moment even if it messes with the audio, that right there, that point aiming forward, immediately as it crossed that transition right there, I could feel it. Because this is a, like right there, that front tire is on sidewall. Steer down, steer down. It's a rollout, but it's not entirely unexpected. I'm not surprised by that at all. But the tire is definitely better at the extreme on a side hill with the point of the sidewall forward. If nothing else comes out of this video, I would put the stamp on that as conclusive. How could I almost forget Slick Rock? It got, it got blown off with the blower mostly to remove again uh, you can see them tangled up there in the back wheels the Palo Verde sticks see what line the canyon trails kind of choose generally the goal is to get a tire up above this ledge and then hopefully pull the ledge but the ledge wants to push you to the right like like that but he gets it angled back gets it angled back I think the rear is caught on one of the rear, and he's, he's up. I know there's a plugin in this uh, in this editing app that has a, a timer in it, and uh, I will see if I can get that to work. No promises. So if you don't see a timer, I don't know how to make it work. Uh, if the timer works, then I figured it out. Now, same exact thing, no camera movement, same thing, scalers. The second verse shouldn't be too much different than the first. Just trying not to drive into a rock here. Okay. With the canyon trails, I cut this way, tried to get this tire up here, and then I cut back and he kind of pushed out. Same, same Z's. Oh, okay. I need to start over. My apologies to everyone involved. I, uh, 
I desperately had to reach up and scratch my own face. Okay. Both hands on the controller this time. As soon as I let go of the steering wheel, this thing just launched to the right. Okay, that right there, that was straight over the top of a river rock. You can still see a lot of whiting on the surface of the tire. Okay, right there. I wanted to see, that's where I wanted to cut back the other time. And right about there is where I let go of the wheel. I'm in a perfect notch somehow. Oy! And again, again, I have to state full disclosure, looked directly at the camera. I'm not trying to give the scalers extra chances here. I'm just saying that I don't have an attention span long enough to do this properly. But like right there, pulling up over that rock, the scaler does it better than the Canyon Trail. The Canyon Trail made this, made this ascent look pretty effortless. See, we're on river rock there. That's just like glass. I can't, I cannot find the same line. Did I come in from here? Feels familiar? Okay, tire A little slower, a little faster. Yeah, that's just a typical, that's a typical ejection profile. So once again, no big detraction from the Canyon Trail. My official, the Crawler Canyon stamp official baseline tire. It's the baseline tire not because it's bad. It's the baseline tire because it does everything pretty well. And in this series of tests, if we want to call these tests, if we want to call each of the obstacle sections that we ran, I would say, trying not to be unfairly biased, the scalers did everything better up until this. This surface is apparently right in the fat part of the strike zone for the cut canyon trail it just did this better i do i mean i feel obligated to somehow get to the top on the scalers we we have to end on that it might be a matter so simple as that the foam it's it's a foam density issue the foams are a little too soft for this kind of just a pure slippery ascent but it and also I would I would also pausing here for a moment I would give a small advantage to the canyon trails in that they have a fair amount of wheel time on them not as in wheel time as in I've learned the ins and outs of the tires as in I think that tire and foam have broken in together uh Two of the scalers feel a little lumpy, like the foam hasn't perfectly set in inside. As I pointed out earlier, the foam is much bigger around than the tires, so there's a little, maybe a little folding inside on the foam. I'm not making excuses for the scaler. I'm, I'm 100% sold on the scaler. I think it's absolutely, it's, oh, just come on. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone understands how much I needed to get up there with those. I would put the scaler, you know, it might be on par with my favorite Duratrax tire, the Deepwoods. And I will say, in comparison, if we were comparing this to the Deepwoods, which we're not, but if we were, I would say that the foam, the relationship lumps aside. The relationship between the foam and the tire fresh out of the package is better with the scalers than with the deep woods. I think the scaler is a tire that fresh out of the package is better. And that's why I call these, the, with the RE in parentheses, why I call these quick views. Because I can't attest to things like, how is it going to do when it breaks in? How is it going to do on different surfaces other than the relatively homogenous surfaces that we've touched right now. We went from relatively high grip to relatively high grip. The, that little section 
of loose of the the uncovered river stone there that's about the slickest stuff that it encountered today the set of scalers on the ground fox origin and obviously a tire with a lug that tight isn't going to do remarkably well on a slick rock i don't think it does i think if we were doing doing just pure river rock i would give the edge to the canyon trails and probably the deep woods even over that but on this sort of mixed surface the let's see if i can do this without loud noises it's just such a composed vehicle uh the scaler out of the package capsule review one of the best that i've tested it did remarkably well it's a very predictable tire uh Perhaps I just don't know the cut angles to get it to do better on surfaces like Slick Rock. But it did everything asked of it. Uh, the SSD Chrome is one of my favorite wheels and I don't really like it on this. They, they will not be staying. Also, as I've said, I think the wheels need to be narrower. Less, less negative offset. I mean, they do it, it get a good tuck there on the rear fender, but that's not talking about the tire. See, I'm getting distracted again. Uh, so let's, let's, let's summarize here briefly thought about taking it indoors would rather just stay here on the bucket for the minute or two that, that will take. So on mountability, I believe I mentioned, I gave it an A forward drive. I give it an A as a matter of fact, let's just be lazy about the whole thing and say that I think I want to say I gave the Duratrax Deep Woods an A- minus in their review. And while I haven't tested these on another rig, this is an LCG element chassis, a ground fox with all element bits underneath. I give this tire an A- minus as well. I think it performs every bit as competently as a Deep Woods, but I think on a build like this one, it's just one person's opinion but I think they look better. And I think that the relationship between the foam and the tire out of the package is better. So forward traction, I would actually, I would give these an A plus. Uh, side hilling, I would give them B plus, A minus. Uh, cost factor, again, if we're only giving an A plus to how cheap a Canyon Trail is, this will kind of offset some of that with the ease of it. You just take them out of the package, punch holes in them and mount them. You don't have to cut and sipe. You don't have to do any of that fancy stuff. So they get an A for that as well. This is, this is, this is an A, we'll, we'll call it an A minus tire because obviously, obviously or less than obviously, let's allow Slick Rock to have put that minus on there. If this guy had managed to take these tires and just scramble to the top, straight up A. But then I give it an A when I'm pretty sure I gave the Deep Woods an A minus and I don't know if it's personal bias or how the Deep Woods is probably my favorite tire. I don't feel like I can put the scaler above the Deep Woods, not in one installment, not in one episode. These were in a plastic bag a couple hours ago. So in that first couple hours, they are an A minus tire, which is really, really good. And you factor in that price point and they might be really, really better. Either way, I think I managed to keep this one shorter than I ordinarily do these things. So I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty good about everything, except I don't know. I don't know if it's the tire. I don't know if it's the rig. I don't know what it is. But, oh, nice. Uh, I don't like the chrome. I don't like the high silver. I think they list these as chrome. I don't like the chrome on this. So not going to keep chrome, but I'm going to keep these tires. Come on, redeem yourself. Have put some, that, that little bit of, of crush time on the rocks. Just get, just get up to the top. It'll be a perfect close on the video. Come on. Come on, do it. You can go the other side if you want. No, it just, it just seems like wheels spinning at this point. I mean, I want it so much to climb that little side angle right there. Low speed doesn't do it. High speed doesn't do it. And I, I also midway, most of the way, 90% of the way through the wrap up here. I will say that 
I would put this directly across from the Pitbull Growler in terms of a tight lug tire or a J Concepts Bounty Hunter. But the Bounty Hunter is only available in class one, so we can't really put him in here. I don't think J Concepts has a class two tire with a lug this tight. They tend to space a bit more uh, of tight lug tires that are not class one. It would be very interesting if J Concepts made a class two Bounty Hunter because I think they would go toe to toe with scalers. I mean, I guess I could buy a set of class one scalers. The battery just fell out. It's it's on the ground now. Uh, so that's, we, we've now officially, we've, uh, that, that, that is the wrap. We're, uh, we're dragging, we're dragging a little something. I, I thought I strapped that in. Maybe I didn't strap that in. Anyway, that's, that's the end of your Crawler Canyon official quick view of the Duratrack Scaler. It's a thumbs up, y'all. I, I would recommend, I would buy another set. I don't know if anybody is in desperate need of another set of tires, but should one come to mind, these are top of the list. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you haven't been here before, go check out more videos. Some of them ramble on even longer than this one. And uh, I do look forward to seeing anyone who stops in to see this one in the next one. Have a good one, everybody.